So today we are going to see the third of the three treasures, the Shen. Are you ready for it? Let's go. All right, so today we're talking about the Shen. And so when we talk about the Shen, we're talking about the radiance of the candle, that picture you have on the front. So the Jing was the candle itself. You can say the Qi was the flame and the Shen is the radiance. So of course they're all interdependent, meaning if you don't have a good quality candle, then the flame is not going to be so bright. So for the sake of presentation, we're separating the three te treasures, but they're always working together. So let's look at the Shen. Uh, first of all, let's look at the character, very interesting character. On the left, you have a character that's altar, and on the right is spirit. So there are so many possible translations for Shen. And a bit like we saw with Qi and Jing, the problem with our languages is that when we, we kind of imprison the meaning in one, we're missing the other one. So they're all embodied in this, um, in this character in a visual way. So you can translate Shen by spirit, soul, God, awareness, consciousness. So all of these words, anything that has um, some sacredness to it, certainly would refer to Shen. And here are some other translations. So sometimes it indicates in old text, celestial gods or spirits. So it can be ghosts, it can be, um, it can be good or bad spirits. Uh, certainly, it would correspond to creator or supreme being. We saw before God could possibly be a translation for it. When we say spirit, it's also the mind, the mental faculties and concentration. So what we will see a bit more in detail that's interesting is that in the Chinese model, um, many of the, the attributes we give to the brain are actually given or attributed to the Shen. It also means expression, demeanor. So in Chinese medicine, for example, in Chinese medicine school, we teach students that the first diagnosis they need to do when people come in is their Shen. Even the way of walking is, is their energy to, the, to their step. Uh, do they look sad? And of course, we do that too. We have a notion of the Shen. We say to somebody, oh, you look tired today, or you look sad. It's, it's that expression uh, that people uh, wear in a way, and that we, we kind of um, understand spontaneously or intuitively. So it also has the meaning of magical, supernatural, miraculous, divine, or genius. So we could talk about the Shen of Mozart, for example, in uh, coming through his music. So all of these are different aspects. It can also mean cautious, careful. So in order to understand that particular meaning, we could go back to the Jing at the beginning, if you remember the first uh, the very first presentation, meaning that when our shan is awake, we have totally nourished by the jing and by the qi, we have a very good awareness about environment, uh, whether to proceed or whether to, to, uh, to stop or being cautious or um, just being aware of danger. So all of that needs concentration, basically, which is a quality of the Shen, being aware, totally aware of our environment. So in martial arts, for example, you uh, 
uh, martial artists learn to develop their shun through a strong jing, meaning to have a vision that is very wide and where they can see their opponent even in 180 degree or even 360 degree, becoming aware of possible attacks. So that um, widening of our awareness is also a quality of the shun. In a more restrictive way, also it can mean the family name. Uh, it's the, the shun that's carried through. So it's, it's kind of like a karma, a karmic uh, sense. Let's say, for example, we know that there is the shun of the Kennedy family. You know, it's like a family carries, uh, the name of a family carries a certain energy that we can always transform, but that's part of a collective, an aspect of the collective shun. So, all of these are aspects of the, the shun. Now, let's look at the classical text definitions of the shun. Number one, shun resides in the heart. So, we are going to be talking a lot about heart health, but please keep in mind that it also includes uh, the radius, radiance of the flame and therefore the, the candle and the flame itself. So, in terms of the heart health itself, which is fire energy, its season is summer. Its color is red. It opens into the tongue. Set. So, we will see that the tongue is an important tool of diagnosis of the heart. So is our expression, our speech, um, a harmonious sound of speech, but we'll see that a little bit later. It controls the sweat. So it's fire, right? Fire energy. So the temperature of our body. So it is not surprising that sweat is a liquid of the heart, uh, meaning that is the way our temperature is controlled in the body. It governs the blood and the blood vessels. Its function is to house the shun. The positive emotions that are associated with a good shun and therefore a strong heart is joy, enthusiasm, love, blooming of talents, Laughter is the sound of the war of the, the heart, as we will see uh, a bit later, um, and warmth, of course. So it's emotional warmth as well as body warmth, and blooming of talents, meaning the full radiance of the personality. So meaning that in that, if we look at that in that uh, model, humility is not or let's say over humility, is not necessarily a quality, meaning that humility is good, but at the same time repressing one's talents or not daring to express one's full talents is seen as damaging to the heart. Um, negative emotions, anxiety, hyperactivity, nervous energy, mental disorder, boredom, blasé, coldness, cruelty, and hatred. So you can see how it's either the hyperactivity of the fire or the lack of fire. So the lack of enthusiasm, for example, when we become, when we fall into a routine in a job and we don't have any enthusiasm for it, for example. In the Chinese model, it damages our innate fire. Um, one thing I would like to mention too, because often you will see that the negative emotion um, that is linked to the heart is translated as joy. So, of course, we think, well, joy, negative emotion. So, I think the way to understand that translation is that it is joy when it disperses the fire. So let's see, for example, somebody learns that they've won the lottery and they have a heart attack, right? It happens a lot. We see that in, uh, in the news. 
or for example a sudden surprise a son coming back from the war when everybody thought he was dead and you know one of the parents mother or father dies of a heart attack so meaning that joy in itself meaning that disperse dispersing of the fire of the heart can be damaging so what that means is joy needs to be anchored in a strong uh, let's say in a strong jing and that joy needs to be stable and when it is not then the fire can be extinguished that's how we can understand that surprising association of joy and negative emotion however the stable joy the happiness of course these are all qualities of the heart and are nourishing to the heart so the negative manifestations of heart problems or we could say of the shun is speech disorder so for example in the chinese model even stuttering shows a weakness in the heart a blockage uh, in heart energy cold especially cold hands will show some we say in in the west of course poor circulation it's the same concepts same concept uh, overheating spreading of fire uh, meaning by that i mean um you know people who thrive on on conflict for example and will spread fire in order to to feel alive or not being able to control the fire of their own heart and so then turning to possible cruelty or uh, damage just, just like a fire can be out of control or a passion that can become out of control so the sound is laughter so here again it can have a positive and negative aspect in terms of diagnosis so uh, laughing and happiness shows a healthy heart but if you have nervous laughter or you know people who have an uncontrollable laughter after they hear bad news for example or you know laughter for no reason all of those could show that there is excessive fire in the heart or blockage in the heart the taste that's associated to the heart and to the fire energy is bitter. So without going too much into detail, we could say that bitter is the taste that comes when things are calcified. And um, there's a, you know, a bitterness that comes from a barbecued meat, for example, will have a, an aspect of bitterness. So it's that bitter that comes from um, calcified or burnt aspect. So here is a chart that uh, I just want to briefly show because it is an interesting, um, an interesting map of how there is a, a relationship between the various energies. So here again, we're not going to go very much into detail about that but we talked about the jing and water energy so you can see in this map how water is in a position of control of the fire energy the wood which corresponds more to liver that we saw also with the chi is you could say is nourishing the fire the water is in a position of control and so meaning that the relationship between wood and fire the um, the burning that is in an overactive liver energy will directly affect fire same thing with the, the gallbladder on the other hand a lack of water will tend to create excess in the fire energy as well so weak kidneys basically will often translate with overactive fire which can be hypertension which can be uh, migraine headaches and that kind of thing right 
So basically, when we talk about protecting our heart, it means keeping cool, both and cool, you know, or we could say keeping cool or warm, that perfect temperature between overheating or too cold. So basically, in that relationship that we just saw, we need to keep the heart cool enough so that the fire is not overwhelming, and we need to keep the kidneys warm so that they're not overly cold and will block the heart. So, like I said, in, um, in Chinese medicine, it's interesting that many of the functions that we attribute to the heart in the scientific model, today's scientific model, are attributed to the brain. So, we can see, however, that today we are slowly coming to that understanding. For example, in scientific studies, it has been shown that heart and cardiovascular diseases create 60% more risk of Alzheimer's. So, obviously, damage to the heart creates damage to the brain. Uh, we talk about vascular dementia that follow strokes. Hypertension is associated to twice the risk of dementia. Bypass surgery, which nowadays, you know, tends to be, um, how to say, um, underrated, meaning that many people are thinking, oh, it's, you know, common surgery and therefore um, not, not a big deal. But there are um, side effects, obviously, and consequences. So 50% people who've had bypass surgery experience a decline in their cognitive functions. So that connection between the brain and the heart is also corroborated in the present um, scientific research. It has also been found that the heart is composed of 40% neurons. So, meaning that the model today of the heart is much more complex than it used to be. So, if you are like me, when you went to school, basically the heart was presented as a mechanical pump that was cleansing the, the heart and then sending it to the body. Today, we know that it's a much more complex uh, system and more alive and for sure, much remains to be discovered, but it basically shows what people have always known, that, you know, we love with the heart, we feel with the heart, and it's, it goes beyond just a mechanical aspect of the heart. So, in the Chinese model, in that old, or sh I should say oriental model, because you find that all over the Orient, Korea, Vietnam, um, everywhere, basically, heart is seen as the Shan's residence, and the heart is seen as the monarch. So, it's not so much a hierarchy, not the heart being the main organ, but basically, the heart is actually in need of all the other organs, all the other systems to work properly. So, uh, a common diagnosis of Chinese medicine is Shen disturbance. So, Shen disturbance meaning it's the heart not working properly and um, having some repercussions on the emotional level. So, here is what one of the classical authors of Chinese medicine, Yu Chang, um, said in Principles of Medical Practice. Anxiety agitates the heart and has repercussions on the lungs. Pensiveness agitates the heart and has repercussions on the spleen. Anger agitates the heart and has repercussions on the liver. Fear agitates the heart and has repercussions on the kidneys. Therefore, all the five emotions affect the heart. So, people usually know 
uh, people who study uh, Chinese medicine know that, for example, liver is associated with anger. But this model is also a little bit more refined in a way you could say, or more sophisticated, meaning that all emotions will affect the heart. And that's what we call shun disturbance. So let's look at heart diagnosis, some of the elements of heart health and indications that our heart is showing some signs of dysfunction or shun disturbance. So good and sound sleep is representative of good, uh, uh, solid, sound heart. So insomnia in that model is seen as a form, as one of the first forms of shun disturbance, meaning the spirit is not quiet. The spirit is not at ease. And when it should rest, if you remember, we said, you know, the spirit rest in the blood, rest in the blood of the liver in particular. So you could say in insomnia, it's like a plane that cannot find a place to land and the spirit continues to turn around, unable to land and rest. So that's a form of shun disturbance. And therefore, one of the aspects of a treatment uh, with Chinese medicine tools, whether it's herbs, whether it's acupuncture, acupressure, qigong, will be to calm and to strengthen the heart. So any disturbed sleep, like nightmares or, or somnolence, sleeping too much, you know, people who fall asleep uh, after meals or in the middle of the, of the day, um, that, you know, that uh, over, oversleeping would also be a sign of heart disorder. Obviously, good circulation is a sign of strong heart, so poor circulation, uh, cold hands, we saw that, or cold body, cold feet, all of that shows problems uh, with the heart. Regular heartbeat. So one of the main indications of heart imbalance is palpitations. Emotional health. So anxiety, any kind of psychic or I could say psychiatric disorders in Chinese medicine is defined as a shun disturbance. So shun disturbance can be mild or can be severe. Yes, there's a, of course, a, very wide, uh, 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 let's say a continuum, a very long continuum, and it can go from mild to very severe. Um, very often we see a con combination of liver disorder affecting the heart. If you remember that chart that we just saw, uh, when the liver is out of balance, the fire of the heart also becomes out of balance. So that's very often um, a syndrome, let's say, that is part of psychiatric disorders or anxiety disorder. Good memory, intelligence, is also in that model attributed to shun. Remember, brain functions are actually uh, associated with the heart. So here we are really talking about, uh, we would say, the memory, everyday memory. If you remember, the Jing was more the long-term memory, the karmic memory, the trauma of past generations. We saw the memory associated with the spleen, which has more to do with memorization and apprenticing and uh, remembering, um, you know, like memorizing, basically. Here we're talking about the, the memory that enables us to be aware of our environment. So, you know, when, for example, we all know, we all have the experience that if we're worried about thinking about something, if we very much uh, obsessing about something, then you know, that's when we don't remember whether we turned off the gas or not, or whether 
we close the, the door or not. And, and we tend to forget things. Um, so that's that kind of memory that is associated with the ability to concentrate. And of course, that's one of the things that in Zen, in Zen practice or in meditation practice, you practice in order to strengthen that ability to concentrate and to observe. So dull thinking would be part of that as well. Regular blood pressure, that's more within the, the parameters of what we know in uh, our uh, present medical knowledge. So of course, that's part of the heart health. So high or low blood pressure. Clear, bright eyes are also part of shun health, health, as opposed to dull eyes or abnormal stare. So if you remember with liver, we saw that eyes were part of the diagnosis of, of the liver, but here we look, we're more talking about the, the radiance of the eyes. Uh, you know, for example, when people suffer from Alzheimer's, at some point you feel like, you know, we say nobody is there. There's kind of a vacancy to the eyes. That's what it is. So when people come in um, for a consultation, one of the first things as part of the shun is beside their demeanor is, are the eyes alive? And can people follow, um, follow, uh, you know, if you show a finger, can they follow that? Or are they looking all around? These are all signs of disturb shun or, um, yes, what we saw as shun disturbance. So normal sweating is also a part of diagnosis, so meaning spontaneous sweating, night sweating, and cold sweat are all part of heart disorders. And again, that is corroborated by medical uh, knowledge today when we know that people who go for a walk and report that they felt a cold sweat, well, it's, it's a, not a very good prognosis. And at that point, uh, it's a good idea to send them to the ER to, to check their heart because it could be a sign of an imminent heart attack. So as part of Shun diagnosis also, the speech, we say the tongue, the heart opens into the tongue. So harmonious speech. On the other hand, shouting, stuttering, uh, talking too much, you know, that nervous talking would be also part of shun disturbance. Um, a pale tongue, or on the other hand, a red tongue, these directly reflect the temperature of the body, and therefore the health of the heart. So the good news about that is harmonious speech uh, is a diagnosis of a good heart. So if you remember, I said we, we say of masters of Chinese medicine, they, they can do a full diagnosis just from the sound of the voice. Um, but cultivating harmonious speech, so poetry, Singing are also ways to bring our, uh, harmony to the heart when there is heart disturbance or shun disturbance. So good complexion, part of heart health. Pale or red complexion is also part of diagnosis of the heart. Adaptability to heat and cold as temperature. On the other hand, intoler intolerance of heat or cold can be a diagnosis of shun disturbance or heart problem. We also saw enthusiasm, joy, as opposed to blasé, bored, routine, a kind of coldness, and intelligence, as opposed to dull thinking or overactive mind. So we could say basically that the shun radiance the shun health is a sign that we see in an accomplished human being. Accomplished in the sense of 
the full radiance of talents. Uh, we could say also it's a concept of an enlightened human being, the full potential of a human being. Some translations would be also aligned with the Tao or aligned with God, whichever uh, you know, whichever spiritual model we resonate with is that notion of the full spiritual radiance, the spiritual awareness and transformation of matter into spirit. Then the Jing or the Xing, which means form, transforms into Shan through work with the Qi that we saw in the first two um, in the first two presentations. In the next part, we'll see more details about diagnosis and also care of the heart, what, um, you know, a more medical understanding of diagnosing, diagnosing the shun and the heart.